Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECWF, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met office run as well. Now there's a lot of uncertainty coming up over the next few weeks as we head into the middle of November. We have cold northerly winds at the moment. We've been waking up to overnight frost last night and we'll probably see another overnight frost uh, over the next few days as we have this cold air mass coming from the north. Beyond that, does it like westerly winds will be moving in for this weekend and start of next week, but then the uncertainty really does build in and I'll show you why we have that much uncertainty in a minute. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do run through the latest GFS, you can see at the moment we got the cold air mass with the big trough of low pressure, cooler air is coming southwards. Uh, it's, the, it's going to sort of peak in terms of how cold it's going to be. Probably around Thursday, Friday time, under the ridge of high pressure that's toppling over, we could be seeing overnight frosts continue throughout this week. Four westerly winds moving for the weekend. Unsettled conditions as well. Still reasonably chilly in the north as we still have colder air there. But we're seeing some big uncertainties build in for the start of next week. Uh, or the middle of next week, you see we start to build up high pressure from the south and it tries to build a Scandinavian high. Now the low pressure and the jet stream is trying to break that down and not let it build up to Scandinavian Svalbard, whereas this high pressure is really trying to get going. And we go into a temporarily chilly easterly flow. Now it's nothing amazing, um, but it is reasonably chilly. And beyond that, we go back westerly winds and we do start to build up a bit... Um, sort of a diving low pressure systems down to our south which can not do anything too major for the UK but if that was a little bit further eastwards we would be going colder as well and right towards the end of the run we're trying to build up another Scandinavian high um, now it's not particularly cold Scandinavian high is a bit further south and eastwards to bring in colder air for the UK but it is still showing that amplification in the jet stream with these high pressure pockets trying to push northwards and these lows as you can see are diving southwards which is just showing you the atmosphere is primed for big amplification and with big amplification we see warm air go northwards and we see cold air go southwards and the uncertainty really is where are we going to end up are we going to be ending up with warm air coming up from the southeast like we are at 384 hours or are we going to be seeing northerly or northeasterly winds build in now, I do want to show you the 6Z run uh, from the GFS, which is drastically different, at even around day 10. So we do run through that. Again, similar over the next few days with the high pressure toppling, low pressure moving in. And then as we build up that Scandinavian high, it doesn't really get going. But what we see is this low pressure move in its place. And that high pressure, instead of building up towards Scandinavia, goes towards Iceland and Greenland. And beyond day 10, we are pulling in a cold northerly wind, potential for snow for a few areas there. And beyond that, we go into a chilly easterly wind. Now, there's not that much cold available air to our north and our east, but it's cold. Um, we would be seeing temperatures maybe four or five degrees widely in the day and overnight temperatures below freezing quite widely. And then you see low pressure mixing in within cold air. And that's a recipe for snowfall over Scottish mountains and northern hills and one of these sort of sleety, snowy um, events uh, in the north. And you can see the amount of blocking further northwards. And you can see the drastic differences between the 6Z and the 12Z. And it's all down to do with where that high pressure goes, where that application is, where does the jet stream go. And it's something we're going to have to really keep watching. Um, now... At this stage, there's nothing guaranteed to be majorly cold, but with this application, it always does give us the potential as we head through the next few weeks. Once colder air does come more available to the north, these northerly winds, northeasterly plunges that we are seeing will get even, even colder. And I would probably be saying now, I definitely do think at some point over the next month, we are going to be seeing something cold. Um, now, it might not be more wide, widespread snow or anything, but we are going to see one of these north or easterly winds come off at some point. Just seeing how these models, what they've been producing over the last few weeks in terms of showing these northerly winds coming, because we are under a northerly wind at the moment, but it's just the cold air to our north isn't quite that cold because it's the start of November. If we saw this in a month's time, we would be a good few degrees colder than what we are now. So if we do now run onto the GM, see how that does compare. Now you can see no northerly winds move in. 
And then we see High Pressure trying to build up towards Scandinavia, kind of getting up there, but not really. And the GEM shows that trough um, of low pressure sitting over ice. And see High Pressure building up towards Scandinavia, High Pressure up towards Northeast Canada, and we are sitting yeah, in that trough. Now, there's not massive amplification compared to the GFS, but there still is quite major amplification. And if we have a look at the AM3 pH period temperatures, we're actually reasonably cold. Um, now, of course, it is an Atlantic wind, but it the air mass originates from the Arctic. So it is still a reasonably cold wind. It wouldn't produce any snow, really, because of dew points, um, as it, but because the dew points rise as it goes over uh, the warmer ocean, picking up more moisture. So it does mean snow really only be over hills where we do see that minus five hours isotherm get through but again just show the massive differences with gm going that big low over the top to our north and if it did start to dive southwards like we were seeing the gfs now that's when we would be going much colder um, and we're looking at the potential for more interesting things to be happening now of course we are in the only in the first couple of weeks of november um so again I wouldn't really want to be wasting any decent synoptics down in mid of no middle of November, as of course you can see there isn't that much cold available air. But, yeah, just got to keep an eye on it really. Um, as we've been saying throughout the winter updates and over the last few weeks, it does look like this potentially could be a front-loaded winter, i.e. where we see the most cold weather um, or the most potential for cold weather through November or middle to late November and December. Not guaranteed, but that's just what we've been hinting at in some of the longer range models, including what the stratosphere is doing and other climate drivers. Now, if we do have a look at the ECWF, see if that does compare to the other two models, you can see again, high pressure toppling over the next, um, over the next weekend. And then we do have high pressure trying to build up towards Scandinavia, not quite making it. And you can see it's a bit more of a muddled pattern. You can see the jet stream amplifying, but it's not doing anything too major. There's loads of small ridges trying to build northwards, but not one is making a clear, definitive go at it. And you can see at the 850 HPA temperature, there is a lot of cold air to our north, and it looks like it may be trying to plunge out towards Scandinavia. So Scandinavia does look like it's going to go very cold. But for the UK, we are in a colder air mass at the day 10, but it does look like Atlantic winds coming in. The east of is a bit of a muddled run in terms of no definitive signal about anything massive westerly but then nothing massively amplified either but there is still the hints of amplification again just something we really need to keep an eye on if we do have a look at the northern hemisphere you can see those ripples in the jet stream with low pressure diving south through central america through southeastern europe so it just shows you the application is still there just in this latest ECMW after run it doesn't quite come off in the central uh, or mid to north atlantic towards the UK. So we now do have a look at the GFS ensembles if you look at 850 HPA temperature and precipitation. You can see quite cold over the next five days of course with the colder air mass. Getting down to minus three, minus four at 850 HPA. Could be a few showers around at times. Again for most areas it will just be cold rain. Uh, but overnight we could see a few overnight frosts. Beyond that temperatures do rise quite quickly. Uh, this weekend to around 3, 4, 5 degrees at 50 HPA around or just touch above average and, and it's going to remain like that for a good 3, 4, 5 days. Beyond that is where the uncertainty comes in. You can see some ensemble members going brutally cold down to minus 8, minus 10 at 50 HPA which really is quite cold for this time of year. That wouldn't be too, anything too abnormal throughout maybe January or February, but for early November those synoptics will be a direct north or northeasterly wind on, but then you've also got to look at the really mild ensemble members going up towards 8 or 10 degrees energy for the And there are, you know, big differences. And it's just something we have to keep really a close eye on. You can just see the amount of uncertainty within these ensembles. Some going to 10 degrees above uh, 10 degrees at 50 HPA, some going down to minus 10. Massive 20 degree difference. And again, you can see precipitation, no massive signal for a high amount of precipitation. But again, um, there is still some precipitation, so we can't rule out big stormy weather but it doesn't look the most likely scenario at this stage if we do have a look at glasgow see how that does compare to london see what we've seen for northwards again a very muddled picture over the next four or five days bit up and down with um mixing between colder and warmer air masses and then around 10th of november onwards really is muddled some going very very cold others going very very mild precipitation signals higher than for london but is expected for northwards but Nothing massive in terms of um, massive frequent uh, 
precipitation spikes uh, all clumped together. There are quite a few, but no absolutely massive precipitation spikes. So it does show you there is this trend of high pressure being involved. And high pressure, of course, in November can mean two things. It could mean amplifying further northwards and bringing in potentially colder weather. Or it could just be sitting over the top of the UK um, and bring us sort of chilly um, but dry weather as well. So we'll have to see really what happens again. But very interesting seeing what's happening at the moment. It does sort of go along with what we've been seeing in the winter updates uh, or winter lookaheads, and what we've been seeing in the long range models as well. So it's just something we've got to have to keep looking at every single day and see how it does develop. Now, if we finally do have a look at the UK Met Service Run, see what we see over the next sort of four or five days. Nothing too exciting, but a few showers around at the moment. And we could see, again, more showers. We could see the Pembrokeshire Dangler, which I've seen on someone mentioned on Twitter, which is basically where you get a bit of a line uh, convergence zone um, across south um, southwestern parts of Wales and southwestern England um, through Pembrokeshire. And you basically see showers form where winds sort of hit each other. Uh, and create a bit of convection and um, we could be seeing that happen nothing too major but just could be a bit more showery there a few snow showers maybe over the northern hills across scotland but nothing too major and showers will continue through tomorrow they will sort of die out a little bit on thursday maybe some in the far east but many areas of thursday are reasonably dry before it does look like weather fronts will be moving in off the atlantic but of course it's because of our toppling high pressure so it's going to be quite a weak cold front um, initially and then we see some heavier rain pushing through Saturday once low pressure does take over and you can see there's going to be rain for all um, with a lot more cloud and showers around. Now if we do have a look at max temperatures it is going to be a pretty chilly week. You can see max temperatures this afternoon only 9 or 10 degrees and overnight tonight you can see temperatures dropping down to maybe 2, 3, 4 degrees colder than that in rural areas and again yesterday the models did underdo it in terms of temperatures did fall a couple of degrees below what the UK Metallic Run was showing yesterday. Tomorrow afternoon, temperatures may peak around 9 or 10 degrees, still pretty chilly. And of course, Scotland and Northern England, maybe only 4 or 5 degrees, or even low, lower than that in a few spots. For Thursday, you can see temperatures overnight getting down to freezing once again, maybe 6 or 7 degrees in the far southeast. And Thursday afternoon, 8 or 9 degrees, not really anywhere seeing getting into double digits, maybe apart from some areas in Ireland and the far south of England. Beyond that, through Friday afternoon or Friday morning, you'll see again another potential overnight frost, especially across England, because we have cloud building in across Scotland. And then afternoon, still 9, 10, 11 degrees, but by Saturday, we are starting to see temperatures rise from the west, maybe 14 degrees across Ireland and Northern Ireland, but still 11 or 12 degrees across England. And then finally, by Sunday, uh, we're going to be seeing temperatures um, around 10, 11 degrees in the south, but still quite cold in the north. Because, of course, as these high pressure and these low pressures start to come in back in off the Atlantic, the westerly winds, and we still have a pocket of cold air trapped just to our north and east. So whenever these lows do clear through and we see slack winds, we will be seeing colder conditions return. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.